You don't need a lot of extra equipment for pen making, but there are a few essentials. You'll need a pen mandrel fitted with the appropriate size bushes. You'll need a good quality drill bit. The most common size is 7mm, but some pens require 8 or 10mm holes. A barrel trimmer is needed to accurately trim the timber back to match the length of the internal tubes. You can buy this singly or in a kit with different size pilots for the different diameters. A pen tube insertion tool helps you put it all together without getting glue all over your fingers. Although not strictly necessary, a pen assembly press makes it much easier to push the barrels into the blanks and keep them nice and square. You can either buy ready prepared blanks or cut them yourself from a range of different materials timber, acrylic, plastic, corian. There's a whole range to try. You don't have to buy special pen turning tools. I use a standard 3 8 spindle gouge, a 3 quarter inch skew chisel and a 3 quarter inch roughing out gouge. And finally you'll need the pen mechanism itself. Choose from a whole range of different styles and types. So let's get started. First choose the material for your blanks and cut off a section slightly longer than twice the length of each tube. Cut it about 4mm over length at this stage. Then rip the blank down to a suitable size to suit the pen you're making. For a 7mm tube I cut the blanks at about 15 millimeters square. Always use a push stick as your fingers start to get close to the blade. To maintain grain continuity in the finished pen, mark a line along the length of the blank where you're going to cut it in half and label each end clearly. Reset the rib fence and now cut the blanks exactly in half. Again use a push stick to keep your fingers well away from the blade. These marks allow you to keep the two cut ends orientated correctly to each other for all the other subsequent operations. The holes need to be drilled from the centre of each blank outwards, again to help with grain continuity. Ideally mark the centre. I grip them in the drill press vise and then just draw in the diagonals from corner to corner. Drill slowly and steadily, withdrawing the drill bit occasionally to clear the swarf. If you force it too quickly with a blunt or a jammed up drill, it will split the blank. These splits may not actually show until you try and push the barrel into the board blank. Even with careful centering you can see the drill bit wanders off slightly which is why you need to cut the blanks over size. Repeat the same procedure for the other blank and again drill from the centre outwards.
With the blanks accurately drilled, you can now think about assembling the tubes. And for this, you'll need some super glue. And you'll find the insertion tool makes the whole job a lot easier. To remove any grease or corrosion, key the surface of the barrels carefully with some fine abrasive. This exposes clean, bare metal below. Hold the barrel on the insertion tool. Then brush on some thin super glue, making sure the whole surface of the barrel is covered. Then quickly Push the barrel into the blank, making sure the end disappears just below the surface. Repeat the procedure for the other blank and again make sure the barrel is seated just below the surface of the timber. To clean up the end of this barrel and blank combination you need to use the barrel trimming tool. This can be used in several ways. You can fit it into an electric drill, hold the blank by hand and then trim. A more precise way is to fit the barrel trimming tool into the pillar drill, grip the blank in the vise as you did for drilling and trim this way. I find it much more controllable. and you end up with perfectly square ends on the blanks. Now the blanks are ready for turning so you'll need your mandrel mounted in the lathe and supported by a revolving centre in the tailstock. You'll also need a high speed. Somewhere around 3000 rpm is ideal. So now you can actually mount the blanks on the mandrel. Take off the nut and slide off all of the collars, leaving a couple at one end just to give you a little bit of clearance. Push on the first blank, making sure it's aligned correctly with the marks in the middle. Put on another spacer, then the second blank, and then a couple more spacers, and finally tighten up the nut. And then bring up the tailstock. Bring up the tool rest. Just spin the work to make sure it's clear. Make sure everything's tight and you're ready to go. I do the bulk of the roughing down with a three quarter inch roughing gouge. Handle well down, bevel rubbing to produce a nice clean cut. Working steadily along the length of each blank. Take your time and don't force the cut. There's a good tip here if you want to get the blanks perfectly parallel. Adjust the tool rest so that it's parallel with the mandrel then use your finger as a guide along the rest gripping the tool. That way the cut is always parallel to the edge of the tool rest. Providing this in line with the mandrel you will get perfect parallel blanks. For a really clean finish try using the skew chisel. Bevel flat on the work and just take a light skimming cut. 
be careful not to touch the collars. Use the same procedure, the finger running on the rest to keep everything nice and straight. Keep working down at the diameter until it's just fractionally bigger than the collars at either end of the wooden blank. Stop the lathe and check everything's nice and straight using a small square. To maintain this squareness during sanding, wrap the abrasive round a small wooden block and then just run this up and down the length of the blanks. Start with something like 240 grit. Keep the abrasive moving at all times so you don't overheat. And work down the grades 320, 400, and then maybe even 600. To finish off, stop the lathe and work the finest abrasive up and down the length of the grain to remove any circular scratches. There are a range of different polishes you can use to finish off. I start with a couple of coats of cellulose sanding sealer. Put this on with a cloth and with a lathe stationary. Rub it um down the length of blanks, working it into the grain. Take your time to get good even coverage. The cellulose dries in seconds and you can then flat it down with the abrasive you finished off with, in this case 800 grit. You'll get a much longer lasting shine if you can build up several coats of the sealer. I always use at least two. Then. To start the polishing process, put on a coat of friction polish. But as this is going to be put on with a lathe spinning, remove the tool rest for safety first. Put a small amount of polish on the cloth. Start the lathe up. Gently apply the polish along the length of the blank. It's light pressure to start with and gradually increase it to develop the shine. It's that quick and that simple. For the final high gloss, apply a coat of carnauba wax, rubbing it gently along the surface, then applying quite firm pressure to start with with the cloth to melt it and spread it, and then just buff more gently to give a super rich shine that looks and feels really good. The assembly process is actually very much easier than it looks. But make yourself an assembly board to help keep everything properly orientated and all the parts in the right order. So take the blanks off the mandrel, keeping them lined up correctly, and then lay out the various components of the pen kit. You can see how the board makes this very much easier. Now you can assemble it in order. If you're using a pen press, grip it firmly in the vise. Start by assembling the bottom nib section into the bottom end of one of the tubes. Adjust the press for length and press it in firmly, making sure it's seated right home. Next is the central section and this has to be pushed in until the round crimped ring 
is pushed in level with the top end of the tube. This is quite important. You can see the ring has been pushed in to the end of the tube. See there? If it's not in far enough, the refill won't protrude far enough out of the nib end. So screw in the refill at this stage and have a look see what it looks like. That one's fine. But if it's not sticking out far enough, press the central section in a little bit further. Now you can assemble the top section. Put the clip over the top end of the second blank and press in the cap. Again you can see how a pen press makes this process very much easier. Push it right home and there's the finished top section. All you have to do now is slide the ring over the protruding part of the refill and central section, push on the top and the pen's finished. It's as simple as that.